Hi friends, welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Jolene Gallatin, and on behalf of myself, our staff, all of our elected leaders, and our entire Trinity family, welcome to worship. As we continue to baby step and find a way forward, we are now at the point where we are able to list our bulletin on our website. So our announcement time will be significantly reduced and we invite you to turn to our website to find each week bulletin. Also, uh, we're moving towards getting our newsletter on the website so you can refer to any upcoming events in that uh, publication. But always, if you have any questions, please contact Terry in the office. As far as friends and family that we are keeping in our prayers, we are trying to keep that information current by sending out updates on our prayer chain. So if you would like to be a part of that email group, please again contact Terry in the office. So with that, a warm welcome to worship as we recognize at this time we are gathered in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In times of uncertainty, we remember you still have the whole world in your hands. As we look ahead to times unknown, we remember you still have the whole world in your hands. God, you are certain. You know all. And you still have the whole world in your hands. lesson is from the 8th chapter of the book of Romans, beginning at the 18th verse. When I consider the sufferings of this present time, they are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed in us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope. 
that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit. We groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope is that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what they have seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know all oh, that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. For those whom God foreknew, God also predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son, in order that the Son might be the firstborn within a very large family. And those whom God predestined, God also called. And those whom God called, God also justified. And those whom God justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? The God who did not withhold the Lord's own Son, but gave him up for us all. Will God not with Jesus also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who then is able to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised and who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress, persecution or famine, nakedness or peril of the sword? For he has written, For your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor anything present now nor anything that is to come, nor any power, nor height, nor depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here ends the reading of the lesson. Good morning to worship kids. It is great to be with you. Today we are reading a letter. A letter that a guy named Paul wrote to 
the Romans. And in this letter, Paul lists some things he was maybe worried about that could get between him and God's love. These things that maybe would mean that um, God's love would go away if they happened. And he lists these things. And some things on his list were that, what about death? When we die, does God stop loving us? Or in life? Or what about in the future? What about now? Things I do now. Will that mean that God's love will go away? What about things in creation that could come up um, that would separate us from God's love? And he says in this list that he's convinced that nothing, especially those things in the list, can separate us from God's love. But our list today might look a little different than what Paul named in his list where he says death or life or angels or demons or present, or future, or powers, height, depth, anything he was worried about could separate us from God's love. But he told the Romans, guess what? That's not true. But when we think about our list, what would be things that you worry about maybe, or think about, of what if that happened, would God's love still be there? Are those things too much for God's love that he would stop? Now, there's this, when I was a kid, um, there was a poet, a guy that wrote poems called Shel Silverstein, and I collected a lot of his books um, of poetry and like The Giving Tree um, is a book that he wrote that's really popular, and I loved his creativity and his poems when I was a kid, and I loved to read them, and there's one poem that he wrote that's called What If, and I want to read that to you today as he lists some things of we might think, what if... I want you to think, do you ever think these things? All right, so here's a poem called What If by Shel Silverstein. Last night, while I was thinking here, some what ifs crawled inside my ear and pranced and partied all night long and sang the same old what if song. What if I'm dumb in school? What if they've closed the swimming pool? What if I get beat up? What if there's poison in my cup? What if I start to cry? What if I get sick and die? What if I flunk that test? What if green hair grows on my chest? What if nobody likes me? What if a bolt of lightning strikes me? What if I don't grow taller? What if my head starts getting smaller? What if the fish won't bite? What if the wind tears up my kite? What if they start a war? What if my parents get divorced? What if the bus is late? What if my teeth don't grow straight? What if I tear my pants? What if I never learn how to dance? Everything seems well, and then the nighttime what ifs strike again. Do you guys ever have questions like that that go through your mind? Like, what if this happens? Or what if this happens at school or with my friends or with my family? Worries that you guys have? I know I do. And they might be different questions that I might ask now and worry about, but oftentimes they're not that different than when I was a kid sometimes. But here's the thing, you guys, no matter what what if you guys might ask, like what if I cry? Or what if I mess up? Or what if I flunk a test? The answer always is, God still loves you. So if you were to say, what if I mess up at school? The answer is, God still loves you. There's no what if that can make God stop loving you. And that is the really good news that gives us hope today to keep going and to never give up is that even in the midst of our what ifs and maybe our worries of things that could um, separate us from God's love, guess what? Nothing ever can. God's love is always there. And so I want you to remember that today, friends, and this week as you maybe have what ifs come into your mind, oftentimes they come when we're laying in bed getting ready to sleep, but they might come up whenever. And when you hear those what ifs come up, I want you to say, but God still loves me. And may that be what you hold on to and don't forget. All right, so our blessings today, please repeat after me. God be in my head, God be in my heart, God be in my left, and God be in my right. Blessings on your week, everybody. Bye. Greetings of God's grace and mercy to you. 
This is the third and final week of our theme, God Still Got the Whole World in God's Hand, with a focus today on hope. Hope. What are you hoping for? This pandemic is producing huge shared hopes. Hope that one doesn't contract the virus. Hope for infections to go down and stop. Hope for people to recover. Hope for a vaccine. Hope to return to large social gatherings like Sunday mornings and concerts and weddings. Hopes for Thanksgiving, including hopes to see family, hopes to travel. We have lots of desired things we want to happen. In trying to get my head around the concept of hope, I realized the great frequency and range of situations in which we use this word. We use the word hope in quite simple phrases, simple wishes, like, I hope they have my favorite ice cream. I hope I get an A. I hope the weather warms up to very serious. I hope she survives the illness. I hope I still have a job. I hope we can restore our relationship. That is a huge spectrum of hopes and desires. This word hope can express confidence or chance wants or wishes. So where do these wishes and wants fit into our faith, into our life with God? A colleague of Father Richard Rohr, Cynthia Burgo, makes a powerful distinction between what she calls ordinary hope and mystical hope. So two kinds of hope. She writes, ordinary hope is tied to outcome and optimistic feeling because we sense that things will get better in the future. Mystical hope is a complete reversal of our usual way of looking at things. Mystical hope is not tied to good outcome. It lives a life of its own seemingly without reference to external circumstances and conditions. Mystical hope has something to do with presence, not a future good outcome, but the immediate experience of being met, held in communion by something intimately at hand. It has something to do with that God's got you. God's got you in God's hands. God's got the whole world in God's hands. It has something to do with being held in those hands, resting in those hands, no matter what happens. Mystical hope is inherently bound up in God in the God we see revealed in Jesus Christ, which the Apostle Paul writes about in our scripture reading from Romans. It truly is a mystery to our rational minds, to our American minds that value positivity and deem it the path to have our dreams come true, to have life go well. Now having hopes and dreams is natural and normal and good and it is helpful to have positive attitudes and ambition. If there is warrant for an awareness that our great emphasis on optimism can go too far and has been described as toxic positivity. This is when we believe that a positive attitude is all you need to have your wishes come true, to have life go well, or the means to deal with our difficulties. But as this pandemic has proven, positivity or wishful thinking is not a vaccine. It is not a safeguard from suffering or loss. 
mystical hope is not dependent on our positivity or brain power or our fervency of faith or medicine. It is dependent on God. And no matter what happens, you are held in God's gentle arms of grace. You are held in God's gentle arms of love. You know, that's good news for my soul. How about you? In conversations with, conversation with Ray and Kathy Larson, I asked them, what does such hope feel like? What does it feel like? And Ray said, assurance and safety. Kathy said it feels like lightness, a lightening of weight. Ray and Kathy speak to the desire of God's hope to bear fruit in our lives, for it to impact our living here and now and our future. Cynthia Burgo states, mystical hope bears fruit within us at the psychological level in the sensations of strength, joy, and satisfaction, including a lightness of being. It is mystical because it really can be a mystery. We can't truly figure it out. I suppose partly because we can't manufacture it. We can't produce it. We can't create it. It is given. This can be especially frustrating and painful, though, in the soil of suffering. The soil of suffering is when we drop into despair due to disease, tragedy, difficulties, or stress, and long for some slivers of hope. We get buried in fear, suffocated with sadness, covered in anxiety. We need and want help and hope now. We need the seeds of God's hope to bear fruit now. One of those times for me was with our firstborn, Emily. By day two of her life outside of the womb, we were being told that there's something going on with her liver beyond typical newborn jaundice. This began the days, weeks, and months of dealing with a liver that had biliary atresia, in which she didn't have a common bile duct. She had surgery at six weeks to create a common bile duct with her intestines. It was so scary to hand her over over, hand over our six pound baby to the surgeon. The surgery went well, yet the weeks and months ahead were a roller coaster. We hoped to avoid needing a liver transplant. There were many days in the hospital that next year, some very hard days. I remember being numb often, frozen with fear, on pilot mode. One particular day, I experienced opposites, in which my anger burned and my heart was held. We were at St. Paul Children's Hospital, and my parents came one Sunday after attending a Curcio weekend, which is a spiritual retreat program. People had created a poster card for us, a big card to show their care, and they brought this. But one comment in particular did the opposite. It said, praying for God's perfect plan for your little girl. Now I know our theologies differ and vary. Mine did not and does not entail that God's perfect plan for a baby girl might be to suffer and possibly die. Because that was what we were dealing with. If that's the plan, I have no desire to be in relationship with that God. 
I hold that life has mysteries and unknowns. And I observe that life on this earth can be incredibly hard, terrible. But I don't think tragedy is orchestrated by God. As if God has a particular plan, as if everything happens for a God-arranged reason. Nope. That God can go away. This God's perfect plan comment did not bring me hope. It did not feel like hope. Not at all. The opposite. I told my mom how angry and unhelpful that statement was for me. I said, I can't even pray right now. And if I could, it certainly would not be that. She nodded and gave me a hug, wrapping her arms and hands around me. After a while, she said, at such times when we can't pray, others pray for us. This brought me comfort. This told me it's okay to not have faith right now. It's okay to not be okay with life, to be honest. This brought me a sense of resting in the hands of others and of God. This felt like hope. Our Emily has done incredibly well. No liver transplant was needed. She is now 27 and has had no signs or symptoms of the disease for over 20 years. The Apostle Paul writes in our Romans reading that the very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. When we can't pray, when we don't know how to pray, the spirit and others pray for us. They hold us. One part of the prayer being said for us, for you and for me and for all, is that no matter what happens, that may we rest in the promise that nothing can separate us from the love of God. That we may rest in hands that hold us with gentleness and kindness. Hands that hold tears. Hands that can handle anger and grief. Hands that hold mercy and peace. Hands that will never, ever let you go. Sometimes, perhaps often, God's hands are known through human hands. I can picture my mom's hands and my dad's hands, even though they have died. Their hands were God in the flesh. What hands have been hands of patience, kindness, gentleness, acceptance for you? Picture those hands. This is our calling, to be hands of hope. Perhaps one particular Practice, prayer practice, can be to picture yourselves resting in God's hands. And God's hands are female hands too. A prayer mantra of hands of rest or holy hands or something that comes to mind for you can be said with your breath over and over. The hope of God is that we may feel God's hope that is to feel assurance and safety, a lightness of weight. Now such feelings and faith can waver and, and that's okay too. Because no matter what, neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate you 
from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. We come to you, O Lord, seeking forgiveness and wholeness. When we feel betrayed and want to lash out, or when we cause others to lose trust in us and we want to hide from the consequences of our actions, hear us, Lord, as we confess to you. When we are afraid and want to insulate ourselves, or when insecurity races through us and we try to build up in order to protect ourselves, hear us, Lord, as we confess to you. When we think we can do life on our own and neglect you, or when we lose sight of our neighbor's needs. Hear us, Lord, as we confess to you. God, bring restoration, peace, compassion, and forgiveness. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Holy Communion is one of our two sacraments. It is the meal where we are unified together as the people of God. It is the gift that we celebrate of Jesus' death and resurrection where he conquered sin and death. And through his own crucifixion, he offered a way of forgiveness and abundant and eternal life for all who believe in him. Usually we practice the sacrament when we come together and worship, but we realize that now as this pandemic continues to move forward, we're not able to gather like we used to. We are lifting up a resource that has been available since April. It is a resource of an in-home communion practice. It's guided uh, through a booklet. This booklet has been available on Trinity's website for the last several months. Uh, but it, again, we lift it up as a resource for something that you might like to consider at this time. As Lutherans, the pastors preside over the sacrament, and when we come together again, we will adopt this best practice again, but recognizing that this continues to be a time of unusual circumstances, we do again want to lift up this option. If you would like a copy of this in-home communion booklet or know somebody who would, would you please contact us because we want to make it available to all people. As we're moving into the season of Advent, we will be celebrating the sacrament each week. So if that is something that you would like to partake in, we invite you to gather the elements before you begin your time of worship. For questions about the elements, again, refer to the booklet or give us a call. Friends, we know that we will be together again soon, and in the meantime, we recognize the gift of God and his love for us. And so we will get through this um, one day at a time. See you soon, friends.
Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for God's power to come upon the church, the world, and all in need. Let us pray. Holy God, for the church in our community and throughout the world, we pray. Help us to turn to you in prayer in this difficult time, trusting that you hear all the prayers of our hearts. God with us, hear our prayer. Holy God, for the nations we pray, bring an end to war and terrorism. Cultivate a worldwide spirit of cooperation that will seek just international agreements and shared human rights. Rescue humankind from the worship of wealth and give a homeland to migrants. God with us, hear our prayer. Holy God, for the United States we pray. Give peace to our conflicted nation. Quell all attempts at violence and restore national goodwill. End prejudice of all kinds and lead us into a unity that embraces diversity. Comfort those who live in fear of the future. Bless all newly elected officials with a passion for justice and commitment to honesty. God with us, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for all who are in need. Visit with health and good medical care all the sick, especially the thousands who each day are contracting the coronavirus. Prepare a vaccine. Give food, employment, and housing to the countless who are struggling to live. We also pray especially for those we name here before you. Kathy, Dovey, Bob, Pastor Bogey, Randy, Sarah, Elaine, Rachel, Judy, Colleen, and Michaela, and all of our service-connected personnel serving here and abroad in any capacity. God with us, hear our prayer. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for an, forever and ever. Amen.
were disciples of Christ called to grow in faith and action.